Hello there everyone. This video will discuss a part of Hematology 1 which is about hemoglobin, specifically the hemoglobin structure. Let's start this video with the question, what is hemoglobin? So let's first discuss a little bit about hemoglobin itself and then we will proceed with the structure. So what is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is one of the most studied proteins of the body, mainly because it is very easy for us to isolate the hemoglobin from the red blood cells, making it very easy to study. The main function of hemoglobin is to transport the oxygen that comes from the lungs going to the tissues and going back to transport carbon dioxide from the tissues going to the lungs. So the hemoglobin is the one responsible for picking up the oxygen in the lungs and delivering it to the different types of peripheral tissue. This is very important because the body tissues and the organs require oxygen for it to function properly and to survive. The hemoglobin also contributes to the acid-base balance by binding and releasing hydrogen ions and to transport nitric oxide. All of this will be discussed. Hemoglobin comprises approximately 95% of cytoplasmic RBC content. So an RBC contains mostly hemoglobin. Remember, a mature RBC does not contain any organelles. It is devoid of mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, and so on. So what is inside a red blood cell? It is made up mostly of hemoglobin. One RBC can contain an approximate number of 270 million biomolecules of hemoglobin, and one hemoglobin can carry four oxygen molecules, and that makes approximately 1 billion oxygen molecules that one red blood cell can carry. Imagine that. That is how efficient one red blood cell can be. Now, since the body can efficiently carry hemoglobin inside the red blood cell, the red blood cell serves another purpose, and this is to protect the hemoglobin. Protect it from what? It protects it from denaturation if the hemoglobin is found outside the red blood cell, and when they pass through the kidney, the red blood cell protects the hemoglobin. So when a hemoglobin is found outside a red blood cell, usually uh, through the process of hemolysis, then the lifespan or the half-life of the hemoglobin decreases. The concentration of hemoglobin within red blood cells is approximately 34 grams per deciliter and its molecular weight is approximately 64,000 daltons. Let's now proceed to the topic at hand, which is hemoglobin structure. And did you know that the hemoglobin is the very first protein whose structure was described using X-ray crystallography? A hemoglobin structure refers to what makes up a hemoglobin and how a hemoglobin looks like. And this is how a hemoglobin structure is usually depicted. It is described to be a globular protein with a very complex structure. It is considered complex because it makes up four units or four monomers. This is one unit or one monomer, the second unit, third unit, and the fourth unit. And each unit is made up of a heme and a globin. Hence the name hemoglobin. Now, since it has four units or four monomers, a hemoglobin is usually referred to as being a tetramer and having a quaternary structure. Let's take a closer look at one unit or one monomer of the hemoglobin molecule. So it is made up of one globin or a polypeptide chain and a heme portion, which is a molecule made up of iron. The globin portion of a hemoglobin consists of four globin chains, and these are usually grouped into two identical pairs. In adults, the globin chains are usually made up of two alpha chains and two beta chains. 
The heme portion, on the other hand, is made up of iron in the middle and a ring of protoporphyrin. The protoporphyrin ring of the heme structure is made up of different carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen atoms. It does not have any amino acids. That's why the protoporphyrin ring is also known as a prosthetic group. Now, in the center of this protoporphyrin ring is the ferrous iron. Now, this ferrous iron is the one that combines with one oxygen. Remember, oxygen only combines in its ferrous state of iron and not in its ferric state. Ferrous iron are the ones that have two electrons. Again, the ferrous form of iron is the one that combines with oxygen. Heme biosynthesis refers to how heme is created or produced, and this involves the mitochondria and the cytoplasm of the bone marrow. The cells involved here would be the erythrocyte precursors, specifically the pronormoblast up to the polychromatic erythrocytes. In the mitochondria, the initial step or the first step and the last three steps happen, while in the cytoplasm is the intermediate or the middle four steps. As we have mentioned earlier, mature red blood cells do not have any organelles. There is no mitochondria removing its ability to produce or to make heme. So again, mature red blood cells that are found in the circulation cannot make heme only the precursors that are found in the bone marrow. Heme biosynthesis happens in the mitochondria and the cytoplasm. It begins by the condensation of succinyl coenzyme A and glycine to form ALA. This is catalyzed by ALA synthase. Since this is a rate-limiting step, it requires the cofactor vitamin B6. The next four steps will happen in the cytoplasm, where ALA undergoes several transformations from porphobilinogen up to coproporphyrinogen 3. The remainder of the steps will happen back in the mitochondria. Coproporphyrinogen 3 will be converted to protoporphyrinogen 9, catalyzed by coproporphyrinogen oxidase. Protoporphyrinogen 9 will be converted to protoporphyrin by protoporphyrinogen oxidase. Ferrous ions will be added to protoporphyrin 9, catalyzed by ferrochelastase, to form the final product, which is heme. Mnemonics may be used to remember the steps of the heme biosynthesis. One mnemonic is, pour your cup proto a cup of heme. The first word pour refers to porphyrinogen. Your is uroporphyrinogen 3. Cup is coproporphyrinogen 3, proto is protoporphyrin 9, and heme is the final product. So that's basically it about the hemoglobin structure, but let's talk about the globin part a little bit more. One hemoglobin is made up of four globin chains, and there are different types of these globin chains. Each chain is a polypeptide chain because it is made up by a sequence of amino acids. Now, the genetic code that gives the different types of globin chains may be found in chromosome 11 and chromosome 16. These different types of globin chains are designated by Greek letters, and there are seven of them. We have the alpha, beta, gamma, delta, Epsilon, Zeta, and Theta. This table gives a summary of the different type of globin chains and the number of amino acids they have. The alpha globin chain has 141 amino acids, while the beta, delta, gamma, epsilon, and zeta all have 146 amino acids each. And Theta, on the other hand, still has an unknown number of amino acids. The gamma globin chain 
has two types. We have gamma A and gamma G. The difference of the two lies on the amino acid on its 136th position. So the amino acid found at position 136 of gamma A is alanine, while in gamma G we have glycine. We know that a hemoglobin is made up of two identical globin chains, and we have just discussed the different types of globin chains. Now, the pairing of these different types of globin chains will dictate what type of hemoglobin is formed. And in a normal human, there are six types of hemoglobin, and all of these are found at different stages in life. The first three would be Portland, Goer 1, and Goer 2, and all these three are found during the embryonic stage. You will not find them in newborns, and you will not find them in adults. These usually appear during the mesoblastic stage of hematopoiesis, and this is around the first three months of embryonic development. Portland is made up of 2 zeta and 2 gamma, while Gower is made up of 2 zeta and 2 epsilon, and Gower 2 is made up of 2 alpha and 2 epsilon chains. The next type of hemoglobin is the fetal hemoglobin or hemoglobin F. Now, this is the most predominant form of hemoglobin in newborns. But it may also be seen in adults at very minimum levels. It is made up of 2 alpha and 2 gamma chains. The fetal F or hemoglobin F is usually formed during the second to the third trimesters of fetal life going up to birth. And then by six months of age, hemoglobin A1 and A2 will start to form. This forms until adulthood. The predominant hemoglobin in adult is now A1 with just minimum numbers of hemoglobin A2. 20% of newborns will have A1 and A2 will just have less than 0.5%. Hemoglobin A1 is made up of 2 alpha and 2 beta chains, while A2 is made up of 2 alpha and 2 delta chains. Now, as we have mentioned earlier, the normal adult hemoglobin is usually made up of 2 alpha and 2 beta chains. The completion of the hemoglobin molecule may be described according to its primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure, and we refer to these as the protein levels of organization for hemoglobin. The first one is the primary structure, and this describes the linear sequence of the polypeptide chain made up of different amino acids. The secondary structure is when the polypeptide chain is coiled into a helix. It is composed of eight helices and seven non-helices. Each globin is divided into eight helices designated by the letters A up to the letters H. And each of these helices are separated by seven non-helical segments. In between the letters E and the letters F is where the heme will be placed or where it will be suspended. The tertiary structure describes the polypeptide chain when it folds into a precise shape that will be able to carry oxygen, and we refer to this shape as a pretzel-like configuration. The last one is the quaternary structure, which completes or describes the complete hemoglobin. And this is a spherical structure with four heme groups attached to four polypeptide chains. And this molecule will now be able to carry four oxygen molecules. The quaternary structure is also known as a tetramer or a tetrameric molecule. 
just to reiterate what we have just mentioned, a globin chain will be made up of eight separate helical segments starting from the letter A going to the letter H. And the heme will be suspended in between the letters E and the letter F. And lastly, just a quick recap about the hemoglobin structure. The red blood cell is mostly composed of hemoglobin, and hemoglobin is made up of four subunits, four heme and four globin chains. An adult hemoglobin is made up of two alpha chains and two beta chains. The iron molecule that carries oxygen is made up of the ferrous iron and the protoporphyrin ring. The reference used for this video is Rodox Hematology, page 124 to 133, but please do additional reading on Clinical Hematology by Steininger, page 72 to 77. And that ends this video about hemoglobin structure. Our next video will discuss the different functions of hemoglobin. Please watch it. Thank you very much for watching.